What's the best way to brew coffee at home? Or what coffee maker should I buy? These two questions we get asked a lot. And questions are simple, but the answer is complicated and somehow personal because as you can see on the table, there are so many options out there. Sponsor of this video is Standard, an independent print magazine about coffee culture and people that surround it. In this video, we will give you a short but hopefully complete overview of the most common coffee brewing methods. We will talk about French press, pour over, clever dripper, air press, mocha pot, but also Ibrick Jezwe, espresso, drip coffee or coffee capsules. We will show you each brewing method in action, we will talk about its pros and cons and how it compares to other similar methods. Okay, so let's start with French press. That is probably the most popular and the most used coffee brewer in the world. Why? I think it's just because it's very simple and easy to use. It has only two parts, a jar and a plunger with plastic or metal mesh. For brewing, you add ground coffee, pour hot water and let it steep for a few minutes. Then you press the plunger down and pour coffee into a cup or carafe. Coffee you usually get from French presses of a higher body. Flavors are more mixed and less transparent compared to pour over coffee. And the liquid is more cloudy as the filter mesh on the plunger doesn't collect all the tiny particles as the paper filter does. Because the whole coffee mass is in contact with water all the time, coffee is immersed in hot water. The French press brewing belongs to the immersion brewing category. So what are some pros of brewing coffee with French press? It's easy to use and you can easily explain it to almost anybody. You don't need any extra filters. Pouring is simple, you don't need any pouring kettles or pouring equipment. You can buy it relatively cheap if you don't opt for more fancy versions like we have. You can brew a bigger volume, big French presses are usually around one liter. And what are some cons of French press? It's difficult to clean. There is a sediment in the cup of coffee that you brewed. The brewing takes longer. It's not a brewing method if you need a coffee in a minute or so. It lacks a clarity of flavor known for pour over coffee, unless you brew it for a really long time. Let's talk about pour over coffee now. What you know is probably one of these three popular brewers. Hario V60, Kalita Wave and Chemex. What they all have in common is that you pour hot water over a coffee mass in the brewer, water percolate through the coffee bed, extracting all the flavors along the way. All three methods use paper to filter grounds from the resulting drink, but other often used options are metal mesh or cloth. For most pour overs, you can expect coffee to be brewed in two to four minutes. Now, let's look at some of the differences. You need to place V60 and Kalita drippers on a carafe or a mug, but Chemex serve as a both brewer, but also carafe. They are all made from different materials. Chemex is glass, we have both ceramic and plastic V60, and Kalita is from metal. There are two things related to the material choice. First is heat transfer, which means how much heat escapes from water to brewer. And another thing is durability, how easy is it to break it. In both categories, plastic or metal performs better, in my opinion, than glass and ceramic. The last thing is the shape of the brewer and the paper filters. You see a big difference between conical shape V60 and Chemex and flatbed shape Kalita. It influences how water percolates through coffee and extract flavors, but that's perhaps a topic for another video. So what are some pros of pour over coffee brewing methods? It produces a very clean and transparent cup thanks to the paper filtration. It's very popular for the light roasty specialty coffees. You have more control over coffee brewing process. It's a ritual and we can consider most brewers as design objects. And basic plastic drippers are cheap. And what are some cons? It can be inconsistent. It can be amazing one day and quite bad another day. It's more complicated technique and you need to learn some pouring style. You need quite better equipment, brewing kettle scales to dial it in. You are wasting quite a lot of paper filters and grind quality and consistency is quite important for pour over method. Before we jump into the following brewing method, which is Clever Dripper, let's talk about this video sponsored, Standard. It's an independent print magazine about coffee culture and the people that surround it. As subscribers, we just received a new issue 22 with a sample of tasty Ethiopian coffee roasted by Lot61 in Amsterdam. Listing through the pages of Standard, I quickly noticed the underlying theme behind many articles and essays, animals. 
I dive into a long-form essay about Kate Cafe's culture, explore burning questions about ethical aspects of Kopilua coffee, and I also learn about the farmer from England who specializes in producing milk for coffee. The highlights of this issue, though, were a surprising article portraying Japan as a coffee-producing country, talking about the first specialty coffee lots grown there, and also Scott Rao's recipe for the fruitiest espresso you will ever try. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should go to standardmagcom ECP and get a yearly subscription that covers four issues of Standard, free worldwide shipping, and coffee samples from some of the best roasters in the world. Clever Dripper is a nice combination between immersion brewing like French press and percolation like pour over coffee. Similar to French press, most coffee mass is immersed in hot water until the moment you open a valve by putting Clever Dripper on a Mac or a carafe. Then it starts to act more like pour over dripper as water passes through a bed of coffee via paper filter into a cup or a carafe. It's common to use slightly coarser grind size than pour over and also total brew time is a little bit longer. Another immersion drippers on the market are Hario Switch, December Dripper, Gina or Vilfa Pour Over Dripper. So what are some pros of Clever Dripper? You have more freedom to play with the grind size since you don't rely purely on gravity. It's easier to replicate method than Pour Over. And you don't need a brewing kettle or any specific coffee tool. And what are some cons? It's more difficult to clean it properly and Clever Dripper, to be honest, is not the most beautiful coffee brewer out there. Aeropress. Aeropress is pressurized immersion brewer. Unlike an espresso machine, pressure doesn't come from a pump, but from your hand. Of course, you have no way to generate that much force, so the resulting cup of coffee is very different. Because you use pressure and sometimes also agitation to speed up the brewing process, coffee extracts much quicker than in French press, for example, and you can expect brewed coffee in one or two minutes. Aeropress has three key parts, the chamber, the plunger and the basket. And there are two basic ways how to brew with the Aeropress. A regular method that comes from the inventor is placing a chamber on a mug or a carafe, adding coffee, hot water and press it down. But you can also put it upside down, it's all called inverted method. Add coffee and water and turn it just before pressing. There is no right or wrong way to do it, it's just a preference and there are hundreds of recipes available for you to try. You should also know that in addition to the regular Aeropress, in 2019, its smaller and even more portable little brother called Aeropress Go was released. Okay, so what we like about brewing coffee with the Aeropress? It's portable, unbreakable, easy to travel with. You brew different kind of coffee from short concentrated espresso-like coffee to big cup of black coffee. It brews coffee quickly. Unless you have a specific recipe, you should have your coffee made in one or two minutes. It's easy to clean and it uses just a small tiny paper filter so there is less waste. And there is a lot of accessories built around the Aeropress like Prismo, pack pack for cold drip, metal filters or even brewing stands. And some cons of brewing coffee with the Aeropress? You brew only a limited amount of coffee which is 200 to 250 milliliters. The brewing process can feel a little awkward at the beginning. The number of recipes and sometimes conflicting recipes can confuse you at the start. And coffee is a little cloudy, especially if you compare it to the pour over coffee. Now, if you want to learn more about the Aeropress, we actually produced a full documentary film about this iconic coffee brewer back in 2018. You will see the inventor of the Aeropress, Alan Adler, people behind the World Aeropress Championship, but also coffee experts like James Hoffman or Tim Vanderbilt. It's called the Aeropress Movie and you can find the link in the description. Mocapot is an Italian iconic stovetop coffee maker that got very popular not only in Europe but around the world. It was invented by Italian engineer Alfonso Bialetti in 1933. Mocapot consists of three basic parts. The bottom chamber where you pour water, the basket for ground coffee and upper chamber that collects brewed coffee. Unlike pour over coffee that relies on gravity to extract coffee in mocha pot, boiling water generates steam in the bottom chamber that pressurizes water through ground coffee up into the collecting chamber. The strength is somehow between espresso and filter coffee, perhaps closer to espresso, what makes it a popular option for mixing with milk. What are some cool things about making coffee with mocha pot? You don't need any brewing kettle, water is heated up inside of the mocha pot. It's quite popular for camping since it's very difficult to break. 
is an iconic design object that is featured in many famous museums of design and modern art. And what are some cons of brewing coffee with mocha pot? One thing is that it's quite difficult to control brewing and it's also difficult to clean and cleaning honestly is quite often neglected. And since you work with the boiling water under pressure, it can be dangerous if not operated carefully. Now, Jezve or Ibrik. It's an ancient brewing method that is still very popular in the Balkan countries, Ukraine, Turkey, Greece and many more. It's known to produce a small and very strong cup of coffee. The brewing process is quite simple. You need a Jezve or Ibrik. You add ground coffee, which needs to be ground very fine, finer than espresso. Add water, coffee to water brew ratio is 1 to 10 and traditionally you bring it to the boil but in more modern approach you stop just before that. Then you pour everything into a cup, it's an unfiltered method so grounds remain in the cup but because it's very fine grind size it sinks into the very bottom. Coffee is very hot after it's brewed so you need to wait before it gets to the drinking temperature. What are some pros of brewing coffee with Jezve or Ibri? It's a simple straightforward method. It's a beautiful ritual and copper jezva is a beautiful object to use. And you don't need any filters. And what are some cons? It can get easily over extracted. You need a very fine grind size, so either you have a universal high-end grinder or you need a dedicated grinder for this method. And you can brew a relatively small amount of coffee at a time. If you want to learn more about this brewing method, check out the tutorial video we did with Torgay Ildisli, a mastermind behind specialty Turkish coffee. Okay, now coffee drip machine. Coffee drip machines or batch brewers are basically automatic machines to brew pour over coffee. They vary in a style, function and also price. The one we have here is called Technivore Mocha Master and it doesn't offer many features but is known for its longevity, water temperature stability and quality of materials. It can brew up to one and a half liters of black coffee at a time. So what are some pros of this method? It's simple to use, just add ground coffee, water and turn it on. You don't need any electric brewing kettle and it brews more consistently compared to hand brew. And what are some cons? It's definitely more difficult to keep it clean, especially if you use thermosis. You have less control over brewing parameters, it's a more expensive machine than a simple pour over dripper and it's a bigger machine so it takes more space on the counter. We visited the Mocha Master factory a few years ago so check out the video if you want to learn more about the production of these iconic coffee makers. All right, espresso. Espresso is strong concentrated coffee with crema that is brewed quickly under high pressure in an espresso machine. Arguably, it's the most complicated way of brewing coffee at home. You have basically three options. Number one, manual espresso machine like I have in front of me. It requires manual force to press hot water over ground coffee. Number two, automatic espresso machine that uses a pump to press water over coffee bed. And number three, super automatic espresso machine with built-in grinders that you control with a button. What can be said about all three options is that it's way more expensive than all methods we mentioned previously. If you opt for super cheap machines, most probably they will either break quickly or will not extract coffee properly. So what are some pros of making espresso coffee? Once set up and calibrated, it's brewed very quickly. The taste of well extracted espresso is amazing. It's a good base for espresso drinks. And what are some cons of this brewing method? Espresso machines are generally expensive. Unless you opt for super automatic machines, you need to learn how to dial in espresso. You need an espresso grinder, which is usually more expensive, and cleaning and maintenance is very important and more labor intensive. A coffee capsule is a pre dose single use container of ground coffee. It's typically around 5.5 grams for Nespresso compatible capsules. We don't usually suggest using pre ground coffee, but since brewing espresso like coffee at home is rather complicated for many folks, we wanted to add this method to the comparison. The coffee brewing process is very simple. You pour cold water into a water tank, turn on the machine to heat up, insert the coffee capsule and push the button. Heated water is pressed against the capsule that serves as pressurized brewing basket into the cup. Brewed coffee has a thin crema and strengths like lungo or diluted espresso. Yet, if using specialty coffee capsules, it can be very aromatic, delicate and fruity. Since Nespresso patents expired, more coffee roasters started exploring this space. Colonna Coffee in the UK was pioneering specialty coffee capsules in Europe. 
Yet, what made us purchase the machines was rare coffee projects like Savage Coffee that brings competition lots from their own farm in Panama that are otherwise very difficult to get access to. So what are some pros of coffee capsules? It's extremely easy to use and user-friendly. You don't need any other equipment than coffee capsule machine. It brews very fast and is relatively easy to clean. And what are some cons? Well, it's not an espresso coffee. It's not fresh coffee, it's pre-ground and pre-dosed, so it ages. It produces more waste since each dose of coffee is packed separately. Per gram of coffee is the most expensive option. Now that we compare all the possible coffee brewing methods, it's time to tell you a little secret. Whatever method you choose, the most important to actual taste is what coffee you start with. That's right, any coffee brewer or machine will not improve the taste of your coffee, so rather than spending big money on machines, it's good to look into what coffee beans you are buying. Some parameters to consider are quality, freshness, and roast level. So when it comes to quality, what we use usually when we brew in our office for these videos is specialty coffee grade. So you might try to find a specialty coffee roaster in the location you live in. When it comes to freshness, it's good to know when coffee was roasted and then don't wait too much to actually brew it because coffee ages and loses its characteristics and qualities over time. And the last thing is rose level. And here is important because we are talking about brew methods and each brew method extracts coffee differently and needs slightly different rose style. Now, surprise number two. If you don't grind coffee fresh just before brewing, you are losing so much from the coffee potential. So if you can, get a grinder, perhaps the best you can afford at the time, hand or electric, and I believe you will not regret. Now it's your turn. Let us know in the comments below what's your favorite brewing method and why. If you have any coffee making tips for the community, please share them because we always learn a lot from reading your thoughts.